this is a clip I went to play. This is courtesy of Flagrant Clips, and it features Joe Rogan when he was on um, Flagrant 2 podcast, which is Adam Schultz's podcast that he does with his friends, Akash, and a few other guys. I don't know their names. Please forgive me. So I wanted to um, quickly play this because it features somebody who I think history hasn't been the kindest to, and obviously he's a bit of a, you know, womp womp himself. But regardless, I thought this was a pretty interesting topic, especially when you take into account what's been going on with Brendan, right? I feel as if, like, for whatever reason, um, the comedy community in LA treated Carlos Mencia way worse than they had done with Brendan. When you consider, you know, don't get me wrong, what Carlos did was obviously abhorrent in terms of stealing people's jokes, especially right in front of them as they're performing. He goes on after the fact and does it on his kind of main flipping spot. Or he just there was their jokes verbatim, and regardless of the fact, and kind of denies it and just flexes on them because he's a bigger, famous comic, whatever it may be. But in terms of severity of a crime, I would be far more offended and far more pissed off if somebody tried to fuck my wife than if somebody tried to steal my jokes. <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but that's what I stand on it. So I'm interested to see what Joe Rogan has to say regarding the Carlos Mencia thing after the fact because I feel like. Maybe Carlos didn't help himself because from what I've seen of Carlos Mencia on other podcast interviews such as Tiger Belly, he does come across like a bit of a cunt. Like he does come across as a very unlikable person. So it makes it easy to root against him. But I think in general, when you look back at things with a, with a somewhat um, clear view of things without the emotion attached to it, um, with the benefit of time, is really what Carlos Mencia done that bad compared to what Brenda's being accused of? Not really too sure. Let's play the clip and see what Joe has to say about Carlos Mencia incident. And you can watch the clip you want if you want yourself in full here. But I'm just going to play it and pause it here and there and add my little two pence. So please forgive me if you do feel a little bit annoyed by it. I don't like trash and fellow comedians. I no. really don't. I genuinely, genuinely don't. No. Did that change after Mencia? You felt a little yes. bad? Yes, 100%. <laughs> really? So. You yeah. felt bad about During it. the moment of it, um, uh, I realized how much negativity it creates. I was almost looking at like like if it was a system, right? If you're looking at a system, you're looking at like you input X and you get back this. And I'm like, okay, uh, a good thing was done where, where people weren't in danger of having their uh, intellectual property taken by someone who's far more successful. Mm. But a, the weird thing was the anger. Like watching the anger, like, it's like you're throwing meat to a, 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 a group of fucking piranhas. Like there's just this buzzing of people joining on one side or the other side. And I realized like a lot, a lot of this is not logical. Mm. And it's one of the problems with the way human beings interact with each other that we just choose teams. Mm. And it's like an, a normal, natural inclination that we can't escape, no matter how logical you are. Like, even if you're like a, a super logical person, you're, you're still, there's some part of you that has an inclination towards teams. So how do you push well, also, yourself away from it? This goes, this I think solidifies my peer view. Peer view. My peer V that I've had for a long time, where I've basically surmised and said, that most likely, the reason why Joe is so protective, I would say, of Brendan, and maybe gives Brendan this false sense of um, superiority, is because deep down, Joe feels kind of bad about the conversation that they had, which led to the you know iconic phrase, you'd be surprised. I think, regardless of how Brendan tries to retcon it, or he tries to make, you know, tell a new story, I don't think Joe meant to say that on air. It just happened because he probably was thinking about it for a while. People always say Joe's very blunt in person, maybe more so than he is on air. And he just says how he feels, kind of just, you know, whatever it may be. And I guess at the time, they were really close. And he generally was trying to look out for him. I was like, you know what? I can't let this guy go back in the octagon again because he's going to get absolutely destroyed and he might not ever be the same person again. So he's trying to look out for him and he just happened to be on the same show that they were on. He obviously does what he does. And then I think immediately after the taping of that show, he felt really bad about what happened. But then I think what happened, um, consequently or whatever, after that incident, was that Rogan made it, I think, and this is my opinion, just looking at the outside in, 
I think Rogan made like a personal promise to himself that he was going to do everything that he could in his power to make sure Brendan didn't have to go back to fighting again. So he's going to set him up in a way that he would, wouldn't have to fight ever again in his life, which obviously I think led to him being one of the most um, guest appearance persons on the GRE. I think if, uh, at the time he had the record. I'm not sure if he still has a record now, but he had a record at one time with guest appearances on there. Um, of course, you know, him doing shows at the comedy store when he wasn't passed and he was still quite green and new there. All these things that he did just to make sure that he had a base so that if anything happened, you know, he wouldn't have to go to go back in order to go in order to, in order to pay for his rent. He could still be able to go on the road. He could still sell merch. He could appear on Rogan and promote his shows, whatever it may be. Because I think, say what you want about Rogan, but he definitely is somebody that's got a big heart. And I think he definitely felt bad about it. And that's why, you know, in a weird way, he also created a monster that we have now at the moment. Because I think Brendan took that kind of protection and took that kind of um, thing that Joe Rogan was doing as a weird kind of stamp of approval. He thought it meant he was one of the guys, I'm funny too, da 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 when really it wasn't. It was just Joe being a hum a decent human and trying to look out for him as a guy and be like, you know what? I don't want you to be in a position where you're having to fight for your dinner because you're not really good at fighting either. And I don't want you to and I like you as a friend and I don't want you to have any serious long term injuries and difficulties from this thing. So I'm gonna set you up in a good way. But then I think Brendan saw it as a thing of like, oh no, I'm one of the guys now. I'm a comedian. I'm one of the stand ups. I mean, I'm in the crew, blah de blah blah blah. And of course, you know, his ego went crazy and we have the months we have now at the moment. Um so I think that's a very um astute point from Joe Rogan in terms of everything. But again I'm I'm just adding fluff to it. He could just be talking just about this situation in general, but that's my opinion on it. Just kind of recognize what it is. Like, know when it pops up and just go, uh, this is a dumb road. But, but is that tough for you? Like, like, when you get shit on by one side specifically and then the other side is like, yo, you're pretty cool. How hard is it for you to just stay even? It's okay. Like, I would shit on me for sure. Wait, really? If I didn't know me, yeah. For what exactly? For some other comic? Oh, it'd make fun of me totally. What would you say? Oh, I'd say terrible things about <laughs> steroid use and <laughs> insecurities of being short. I have a lot of great jokes about me. Really? It'd be a lot of fun. So you don't even, do, when people make fun of you, do you care? Well, you can care, but it's not going to change the way they think. Mm. Like, like it's not good if you hear it. Like, if someone said it to my face, I'd be like, that's mean. Yeah. Like, why are you being mean to me? I, mean, yeah. I don't even know you. Yeah. People will say mean things to you just to try to get a reaction out of you. But those people are usually way more dangerous than the average person that says something online. The average person says something online. It's like you're not even connected. Like, maybe you are. It's like you're, you're, like you're, you're trapped in a cave and there's like a tunnel that goes up to the air and you're like fuck you like, you're, yeah, yeah, you're not yeah, connected yeah. to that person you're yeah, not in front yeah. of them if someone is mean to you in front of you that's a real problem yeah. yeah and weirdness is when it spills over when people get used to communicating with people the way they do on the internet and they try to do it in real life and you see it all the time in world star videos <laughs> you know what's really interesting about this point that he made you know an interesting point about it <coughs> when it comes to brendan and, uh, you know, the attention he gets from the homeless cats and the fire in the kids subreddit. It's really bizarre because I feel like, for the most part, you would imagine most of Brendan's communications with people in real life are pretty positive, right? The dude's six plus, six foot plus, 250 pounds plus, former UFC heavyweight, can clearly look after himself. You'd imagine most of his interactions are pretty positive. So I've never really understood from my point of view, again, even being somebody that maybe, you know, you, you would have described as a flipping quote unquote hater. I've never really understood this whole thing that he has being in bonnet about silencing people online who don't like what he does. Because for the most part, from what I've seen, the people that don't like what he does online are a very small minority to the people that do like the stuff that he does. Because those people go and buy tickets, those people go and buy merch, those people, you know, say hi to him at, you know, at shows and take pictures and shit. The people on the internet, you're never going to change their opinion of you anyway. So I don't understand why he does all the things that he does, like lawsuits and all this stuff. It just doesn't really make any sense. And this is one of the most confusing, I think, 
parts about Brendan as a person that I don't really care. No, sorry, um, uh, what you call it? That I don't really get really as a person. I don't really understand because it's clear that Joe Rogan is sort of like his um, North Star. It's sort of like the person he kind of molds his career around, right? Or molds his career yeah, around, bases a career on, whatever it may be, right? Somebody looks at and thinks, oh, wow, look what he's achieved. And he has very, I think, lucid way of kind of looking at himself and he's pretty centred and seems that like somebody doesn't really take life too seriously and just enjoys the moment and absorbs it. You know what I mean? Like, he seems like a pretty decent rich dude, right? So basically, I'm trying to make the point of... But for whatever reason, Brendan has picked and chosen the parts of his personality that he wants to emulate. But the one thing that he doesn't even try to emulate and comes close to is how Joe Rogan deals with trolls and haters and stuff because Joe's probably got maybe, I think maybe, if not worse, probably the same level um, in terms of people that are coming after him. Like, there was a concerted effort to cancel him, even though he's a fucking multi-millionaire, close to maybe being a billionaire, you know, during the pandemic. A concerted effort, like, they tried really, really hard to get him the fuck out of here. Like, Brendan's not ha ever had that kind of attention and scrutiny on him, ever. Especially with a million, you know, with a couple, what, with a hundred million dollar flipping deal, check in the back pocket, do you know what I mean? And he was able to weather it in a pretty sensible, grown-up, non-emotional way. And I don't understand why Brendan can't do the same thing with people who just don't think he's funny. And it's, again, it's not even that bad that, hey, I don't think. People take a piss out of how he talks. But the truth is, he does talk really weird. People take the piss out of how he dresses because, you know, he dresses like a 15-year-old. People take the piss because he doesn't, you know, he's not as funny as maybe he thinks he is, which is the truth. He's not as funny as he thinks he is. It's not really that deep, though. It's not really anything deeper than that. It's just whatever. And for whatever reason, he doesn't seem to be able to kind of just let it be. It's a very strange, very strange way. But maybe it's just, maybe again, to be fair to the guy too, maybe it's, um, maybe it's, maybe it's also years and years of abuse. Because maybe it's a thing with some people. Because maybe um, I've, I've thought about it myself because I've been on the internet for a while. I've been on forums for ages. I've been on chat rooms. Like I, I mentioned before, I? I used to go on this thing called Black Chat back in the day to try and hook up with girls. And it's exactly what you think it is. It's called Black Chat. And, you know, the idea around it was that you were going to try and hook up with, like, random black people around London and the UK and stuff. And it could be anybody. You don't know what they advertise or whatever it may be. It was all kind of online-based. Um, I've been on forums from day dot. And I think because of that, Maybe I've just got a bit of a thicker skin. I don't really take anything seriously. It's just internet. It just doesn't really matter, really, innit? People just say crazy shit to get people's attention. Don't really, I don't care. I let everything run. You know, on my comment section, I don't delete. I've never deleted a comment in my entire life. Like, if YouTube decides to block a comment, that's them. But I never delete people's comments. I, never, I mean, I don't give a shit, really, for the most part. But then again, I'm fucking small potatoes do you know what I mean I can only imagine what it's like being reminded every single minute of your life <laughs> that what you're doing people hate it right they hate everything about what you do they think you're not funny they think you gave yourself cauliflower ears they think you're redacted they take the piss out of what you wear what how you eat how you drink and maybe there must come a point where you're like you know what enough's enough I'm just gonna I'm gonna snap but unfortunately with the internet once you show weakness once you show and you give light to things that annoy you, people are going to just keep twisting and twisting and twisting. And unfortunately, this is the bed he's made in it, and now he's got a lie in it. It is what it is. It is what it 